we are going to be talking about the integrator circuit. This is a very interesting op-amp circuit because it outputs the integral of the input voltage. In this video, we're going to start off with analyzing the circuit and derive the output voltage in terms of the input voltage. Once we've derived the output voltage in terms of the input, we're going to plug in some values and see what happens when we plot our output voltage if we're given this as our VI input voltage. Starting the same way as always, I'm going to begin my analysis by defining a current for every component. And in this case, I only have to define this current right here. And this is going to be I1, and no current goes into my op amp, so I1 continues around. Next, I have to define my node voltages. My input source, VI, is defined with reference to ground, so I can call this node VI here. In the same way, my output voltage is referenced to ground as well, so I can call this node VO. The positive node being connected to ground has a zero potential. Starting off with my resistor, I can write that I1 is going to be equal to VI minus zero divided by R. Now I have to write the equation for my capacitor. The equation for a capacitor is that IC is equal to the capacitance value multiplied by the derivative of the potential difference across it. In this case, you can say the derivative of one side of the capacitor, V plus, minus the derivative of V minus per unit time. And I1 is going to be the current through my capacitor, IC, and that is going to be equal to the capacitance value multiplied by DV plus, which is zero in this case, minus dv minus. So we'll have zero minus, now we have to take the derivative of our output voltage because this is dv minus, so we'll say dvo per unit time. Now what I can do is I can equate my two i1s together, and this is going to give us vi divided by r is equal to, I'll write negative c dvo dt. Now in order to solve for vo, I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation. So this will give me the integral of vi divided by r is equal to negative c vo. So now I can write that vo is equal to 1 over negative rc times the integral of vi dt. Now let's say I set my r value to be equal to 1k, and I set my c value to be equal to 2 millifarads. My equation for vo would be negative 1 over 2 multiplied by the integral of vi dt. With these values, I now have a definition of VO for a given VI. So now let's take this VI and calculate our VO. So now using this equation, let's begin to calculate VO from VI. For this first interval, VI is equal to two. So from here, the integral of VI of T dt equals to T plus C. And in this case, two is our slope, C is our initial condition, but also the y-intercept of the line. So now what I can do is, now that I know the integral of vi of t is equal to 2t, and c in this case is going to be 0 because we're starting off from the beginning at time is equal to 0 and we don't have an initial condition, let's plug this into our vo equation, and we'll have that vo is equal to negative 1 over 2 multiplied by 2t. So for this first interval between 0 and 1, the v out is going to be described by this line. So plotting this, VO is going to go from 0 to negative 1. Now let's continue to our next interval, between 1 and 2. VI of T for this interval, between 1 and 2, is going to be equal to negative 2. So that means that the integral of VI of T is going to be equal to negative 2T plus C. Now in this case, the constant C is going to be important because we have this first interval here that's going to give us an initial condition. But the good news for us, we don't have to calculate the actual y-intercept. We can focus on the slope and pick up where our last graph left off. So we can say that VO is equal to negative 1 over 2 multiplied by negative 2T plus C. We can distribute the negative 1 half, and we'll have that VO is equal to 1T minus 1 half C. So the slope in this case is going to be 1T, and we have some constant negative 1 half C. So now this negative 1 half C is going to be a number that's based on the previous condition of our graph. And really, this is going to be the y-intercept that describes this line. But instead of calculating specifically what negative 1 over 2c is, instead what I'm going to do is say my graph continues from the point it left off, and I'm just going to focus on the slope of 1t. So a slope of 1t is going to bring me back from negative 1 back to 0 at 2. Now for our last interval, we have vi is equal to 2 again. So that means the integral of vi of t dt is equal to 
2t plus c, and we can plug this into our VO equation, and we'll have that VO is equal to negative 1 over 2 multiplied by 2t plus c, and this gives us VO is equal to negative 1t minus 1 over 2c. And again, I'm not going to worry about this negative 1 over 2c. Instead, I'm going to focus on the slope of the graph and connect it to where it left off. And that's going to connect right here and end at negative 1 when t is equal to 3. And this graph is the final answer to the problem. If you thought this video was well made, or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.